What is up? Uh, today we're going to do a little video on another little Craigslist score that I got here. Uh, I've been waiting for a good deal to come along so I can pick up a rear winch. I picked up this quote unquote working M8000 from the Craigslist ads. There was a little bit of a motor issue. Uh, the armature stud was shorting to the case, but I actually did run the motor for a minute, so technically it was quote unquote working. Uh, what we're going to do today is just kind of tear into the gearbox and make sure that it's not all gnarly. Figure out what other parts need to be replaced. As mentioned, I already dealt with the motor part of this, so I'm just going to pull it off to get it out of the way, make it a little less cumbersome. You see these are nice and nice and gouged up. So at that point, this stuff basically just falls apart. There's that, it's pretty dirty, but not too bad. And that bearing feels good. The drum just falls off. Oh, there we go. A little bit dirty. This collar, this bushing's actually in good shape. I don't think we'll have to replace that. take off the end cap stuff. All right, so all of the bolts came out relatively easy. It's ready to go ahead and pop this gear set apart. You can see, again, it's just a little bit dirty. Nothing too, too bad, though, so. Pull that guy off. Shot of the gears, they look pretty good. I probably shouldn't even really be messing with it. And I mean, there we go, it actually looks really good. Definitely can't complain about that. this again again the inside of the case it's nice and shiny so we're a golden shower here I'm gonna clean all this up for good measure and a friend of mine has got some of the super special worn lube and we'll lube it back up and put it back together what you do is you want to go through and at least look at least look at all these gear teeth on all these gears and make sure that there's nothing dinged up all right, one other thing I do want to mention while we're here is uh, the timing of the case. I told a friend of mine I was taking this case apart, and he was like, oh, God, did you mark it? Did you mark it? And I was like, no, I should no. I just threw everything on the desk. Uh, just kidding. I've been doing this for a while, so I can kind of just throw shit around and do what I want. But for shits and giggles, I marked it. You can see there's a little punch mark right here. You can choose your marking with a Sharpie or whatever, but this is all greasy, so a Sharpie wasn't going to work out for me. On Warren's website, it says these are clockable on both ends, the motor as well as the gear range, and I'll put the screen in right here. Uh, so I decided to tear it down and see what the deal is, and basically the long and short of this is, if you don't know what clockable means, just picture an old school clock with hands, not the clock on the front of your stupid phone. So we have our dial at the top here, and if you wanted the dial sideways or underneath or whatever, because your bumper, you can't reach it, they are clockable. What I found was these holes line up at every other slot. These all key together with the gears inside of here, and it does that relationship between both pieces. So if you get all clocked out, that's basically where you're at. Uh, so what I'm gonna end up doing is, this will be underneath the vehicle like this. I'm gonna end up clocking this handle because the holes, you can't clock it at a 90. So it's kind of like at a, I, I don't know, like a 33 and a 30 at like three different positions basically with this is how it'll work out. So basically you can see this is what I mean by clocked. That's where this will be underneath my vehicle like this and it'll allow me to reach it from underneath. I'm off to like reach from the top or around or whatever. All right, so I have all the bits for the winch back together now. Uh, I just got to touch on a couple things as far as like lubrication and the assembly process. You don't want to get crazy with the grease and lube on this because it will just kind of gum things up in there. We have the 
super special lube. Basically what we're gonna talk about is the gear housing, how this gets lubed up, your free spool clutch. So the free spool clutch has two sides. I just kinda wanna talk about this. This is the end that will go down and engage with the case. You can see these are like cut away. It's got the little uh, geared cog, so it makes it a little bit easier for this to ratchet into the housing. Whereas this side is a more of a machine surface. It makes it a little bit more difficult to get down in there. So that's basically where we are. We can just slam this guy down in here now. No real reason to like loop up the housing. Like I said, we don't want to gum it up, it'll be fine. And it's really not that big of a deal if we have to get back in here. The next piece that goes down is gonna be the sun gear, this little guy here. And it rides down in that bronze bushing, so you just wanna make sure that this is lubed up pretty good. Probably wouldn't hurt to just stick some down into the bushing. And this gear's hollow as well, so it's not like you can really stick it down in there. The brake ends up in this hole, and there it is like that. You don't have to get crazy, you can use a paintbrush or whatever to do these. I'm just putting a little bit on my finger. You just slap it in here and you turn it around. We just want to make sure that all the gears were all coated up, but we're not getting real stupid with it. Now that the two planetaries are lubed up, we can just drop them down in the hole and you run the smaller one down in there first. So now both the planetaries are in, you can go ahead and add this last gear set. Then the thrust washer comes in. This has got a little notch. You want this notch facing the large planetary gear. It's a large planetary, it's all lubed up. This is the, the gear side where it runs the drum, so this will go out or go up when you're assembling this here. When this is all in there assembled, you can see that planetary sat down and you can see what that reveal is there. It looks like it's pretty solid 3 eighths of an inch or whatever. Now we can go ahead and assemble the cases together. Remember these are keyed. This one's getting clocked a little bit. Case is all bolted down. The next piece is the bushing. You can see it has got this keyway for there. Flange goes up, it's the only way it'll fit. Go ahead and drop this guy in. And take your drum. And drop it in there. Just a little side note here. This is the old brake drum shaft. You can see it, it's all damaged right here. A little bit of extra money spent. Had to get a new rod. Got some more of these super heavy duty tie rods from Warren. But you'll see this is how this assembles. It's going to be under the drum so you won't really be able to see it. And you can see how these keyways go on here like this. And then you can see the keyway in this guy. So those two gears need to go uh, like this is at noon and six, so these will go at nine and three on there. And that way that brake will work. Turn back on. Brake down in there. All right. Now we're to this part. This is basically, again, just the other side. Same action on this. The collar goes in there. It's located by that slot. And then this guy goes on there. These tie rods are fairly straightforward. Uh, they don't come threaded. They just give you these self-tappers. Uh, I self-tapped these already, so I didn't bore you with that. But they tap easily by hand, so it wasn't a huge deal anyway. This, again, is a quarter, quarter inch Allen. The damage to these tie rods is caused by bundling your spool up on one side while you're winching in. You can see these are rubbed on and pushed. So that was basically what was going on and why they were damaged. I'm a big fan of synthetic rope. Probably not as likely to have something like that go on when you do that. This winch is going to get rope. I prefer the rope just because it's light. It's easy to work with. There's no memory. I figure for shits and giggles, we would just get a weight on this thing. I'll weigh it like this bare, and then I'll weigh the motor and, and then math, you know. I have to get under the truck with it. I just don't want to molest it. Come see that? 23.2. Just the motor, 17. 23 and 17 gives us roughly 40 pounds. Uh, this winch came with uh, about 70 feet of line on it, and that ended up weighing in at... 13 pounds so I guess all dress we would be in at about 53 pounds on this guy underneath the rig as you can see I'm doing up the rear winch mount and basically what I ended up doing is kind of modifying the spare tire bracket I cut about half of it out you'll see kind of what goes on you can see the mount here on the floor and some brackets and stuff that started life as a barns dual pull we had to cut it down a little bit to fit it and then some of my brackets that are going to go in here so just bear with me here and i'll mock it up i spared you guys all the grinding and cussing because that's always boring as shit 
And here you can see this first little bracket. And this is a little bracket here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm shoring up this piece of tube that's cut out. I'm gonna get in here and weld all in here. Hopefully that's gonna keep that from twisting. And then I also have another plate that's gonna go in this hole that will also help shore this area up right here. Well, I ran out of fucking welding gas. But you can see what we've got going on here. I got this bracket up in there. On this side, I didn't get the other bracket in, but I did get it start welded. I need to get up over on the other side of the frame and everything. And then, you can see this ugly shit right here where I actually ran out of gas. But, overall, I think it's all right. I just kind of wanted to talk about the, the end splice on here. Like, I'm not a rope professional. This is the berry that they put on this rope. And mind you, it's got, I guess what they're calling the br Brummel splice here. It's a little bit different than the regular berry splice. Factor 55 in their FID, you may or may not be able to read this anyway. They're recommending about a 30 inch berry for this 3 8 rope. This rope locks on itself like finger cuffs. Everybody knows finger cuffs, right? So kind of the longer you have in there, the more stick you're gonna get. So while the splice isn't a big deal, I was gonna cut this rope down because uh, I don't need this much length in this back winch. So I'm gonna cut this down and just re-splice the end as a uh, length extension. I don't have a bunch of rope like bundling up. You saw how these tie rods were bent before and mind you, this winch rope won't do that, but we don't wanna do bunching. So, uh, scored a couple more ends and I'm gonna just re-splice this for you and show you what's up. This stuff can be kind of a pain to trim so what I'm gonna do here is uh, put a little tape on here and if you've ever done like stainless wire or stainless hose work or whatever so we'll tape it. I'm just gonna hit it with a zip wheel real quick. Booyah. Per the direction of the Factor 55 stuff you want about a 30 inch berry on this 3 8 rope. Looks like that. If you have not seen this bad boy before, this works like the finger cuffs as well. It makes it super simple. You just collapse this guy down, this little cage, like this. And take your end. Again, whenever you're doing this, putting a little tape on the end makes it a little bit easier. These strands can get all winged up in there. And then if you needed to like splice or re-splice, it makes it a pain in the ease. Ask me how I know. I just want to give you guys a little bit better, better look at what I'm doing here. So you can see. So, again, we just want to pinch the rope up like this. That gets it loosed up so you can like see the air gap in between there and stuff. And then you want to take this and split it in the middle. Basically, as good as possible here, you know, you can kind of feel it. That looks like pretty much like it is, right? So this thing is kind of fine, so you just want to be careful when you go to like push that through. You just push this up a little bit and it'll come through good again. Pull it through like that. So like this. Pull it up and it'll look like that. And we'll do it three times again. You want to have it as close, basically as close to this other one as you possibly can here. So you just want to do it like in the second or third you know, right in this next area. And while this awesome tool isn't necessary, you can literally get this done. Like if you had an issue on a trail or something like that, with like, I've done this before with literally a piece of black tape and a pen end. I've done it at a different time with some black tape and a piece of bamboo. So I always preach in the off-road world if you're seriously into off-roading you need to be into like outside thinking fixing with crazy solutions things like that you get stuck in the box and then you're just fucking stuck that sucks so three times and then we'll go with the berry so the paint obviously didn't work on this tape I put a little tape in down here so I know where I'm supposed to pull out <laughs> Once you get it inside there, it's pretty easy to just keep going. And again, it's like finger cuffs, just push it up on there slow, tail down, pull it out, and we'll just 
milk that bad boy back down in there. All right, here's this guy spliced up. These flat splicers are sweet. Again, factor 55 stuff. It takes one second to splice the rope. I can't see paying the additional money. And there's where we're at right there. I just wanted to get a little shot down here before I go ahead and get the winch mounted up of the plate. You can see we got it all in and all welded up, all the gussets and everything. And obviously it's black. This footage is not awesome, but you can see what we've got going on here. I got her all bolted in. All the wiring is all run. You see how we've got her tucked up here. All the covers. I went ahead and caught all the battery cable with these P clamps that I modified. So these ones are immediately caught on what would have normally been the fair lead mount bolt holes or whatever. You can see how I have it mounted up along the top of the fuel tank right there. I've got a couple of zip ties back on the other side. Right there. And then you can see where we continue running up on the cab. A couple different captures right here and then it just terminates on the battery. <clears throat> Another capture underneath the tank right here. And then, as mentioned, I've got another zip tie where it's running up there. I mostly wanted this to be very secure so it's not chafing anywhere. And then I surprisingly turn the switch on underneath the hood and start a fire. That would be a bad scene. Again, I just terminated this with a trailer plug to make sure it matches the other end of my remote control. No reason to have two remotes. Two separate winches. This is the Temco contactor. And the other thing I did with this is, this is a 60 foot length of rope. I cut down to 90 foot. Uh, it's really I just don't need that much back here and it keeps it from spooling up on one side or the other if I have to side pull. And obviously with this being mounted under the vehicle it will be susceptible to water or potentially debris damage and things. So I'm not sponsored. I just bought this cover because it was cheap. It looked like it would be relatively waterproof and it was cheap enough that I could modify it. Uh, what I ended up doing was we just have a little slot on this side. Uh, I just opened this up a little bit basically took this whole side out so it fits over the mount underneath the car Here is what she looks like with the cover installed Not the sexiest thing, but like I said, it's just mostly here to keep the spray off That wraps up another episode of snail racing Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe